This is what 100 kilometers per hour looks like on the African savanna. In the bushland, however, the cheetah relies on a whole different set of skills. It hunts, but without exerting itself so much. What do you mean? It's running quite fast. Oh, Charlie, funny running into you here. Yes, but not at top speed. Not top speed? Why not? I'll tell you. One study examined 70 cheetah hunts. The average maximum speed was only around 30 kilometers per hour. Whoa, that's quite a difference. It is, isn't it? And that's only half the story. These grand felines use another incredible skill, the disappearing reappearing act. Holy cat! Our team was able to capture a cat's eye view of the action. Here, the prey is about 20 meters out in front. But now it's gone. Where did it go? There, the cheetah caught up to it. How did it do that? Amazing, right? Could it be teleporting? <laughs> You've let the cat out of the bag. Let's uncover the closely guarded secrets of this magical hunter. We've arrived in Namibia in Southern Africa. It's a well-known cheetah paradise with some 3,000 of the big cats calling it home. Michael Scantleberry has been studying cheetah behavior for many years. He employs a wide variety of tools in his research. We set out with Scantleberry using a tracking device but we've got a lot of ground to cover. And the African bushland offers poor visibility. Our only hope is the signal sent out from a transmitter somewhere out here. We move slowly in order to not miss the target. So she could be anywhere within about there. She's there. You see? Oh, there, a cheetah and the transmitter. Scantlebury has been tracking this meter long female for the past few years. She was released from a local rehabilitation facility a number of years back, so she's quite used to people. Along with the transmitter, She's been fitted with a special cheetah cam. Scantleberry hopes to capture the big cat's perspective to learn more about cheetah behavior in the bushland. So you can match behavior, which is recorded electronically, to what we're recording from video footage. And I, as I understand, this is the first time this has been actually achieved. She's off. So let's tag along. What is life like for a cheetah living in such an environment? Not exactly a walk in the park. This looks like rough going. Now what? Up she goes. In fact, this behavior is seen only in the bush. Cheetahs living in the savanna don't climb trees. But she's a little unsteady on her paws. Cheetahs aren't expert tree climbers. She seems to be looking around for something. Due to poor visibility, there's no other choice but to seek out a high vantage point when searching for prey. Ah, perhaps she spotted something. And she's wasting no time.
after about 500 meters, she stops. In the distance, a herd of springboks and impalas. These are the cheetah's favorite prey. Our feline trots deeper into the bush and slowly advances. Well camouflaged in the dense shrubbery, she seems to be waiting for the perfect moment. And the race is on. But she's at a disadvantage. Her most powerful skill, speed, is useless here. She can reach only 30 kilometers per hour. Will that be enough? She did it! But how? Cheetahs in the bush use a completely different strategy from those living in the open plains. In the savanna, where the view is clear, they run down prey with their stellar 100 km per hour speed. But in the bush, they hide and advance as close as possible to their target before attacking. And what about that other technique, the so-called teleporting? Well, the caller camera captured that too. As you can see, there's a herd of animals in the distance. The cheetah takes off. Seven seconds into the hunt, She's chosen her target. The distance between them is about 20 meters. Now watch closely. As she chases it, the target suddenly disappears from view. But she still dashes into the bush. And voila, the animal is once again in front of her. It's almost as if the cheetah teleported. And it appears the prey is now running across her path. In the next moment, the pursuit is over. So what exactly happened? We were in for quite a surprise while analyzing the footage. It's much closer because she just cut the corner. Here is Scantleberry's theory. In its bid to escape, the prey made sudden turns while staying close to the bushes. The cheetah judged the prey's speed and anticipated its next move. She decided not to continue the chase from behind, but instead to make a parallel turn. That's why the prey momentarily disappeared from view. And when the cheetah came from behind the bush, the prey reappeared in front of her. Their paths soon crossed because the cheetah had taken a shortcut. Cheetah was making decisions based on what the animals were doing and then try to use the environment. In the bush, speed is not always a determining factor. Instead, by using the environment, she worked out a clever hunting technique that resembled teleportation. To the victor, the spoils. But she soon stops eating. She leaves the catch behind and walks away. 
What happened? She seems to be looking for something. Ah, a small cheetah is there among the branches. It's her cub. She's right in the middle of raising young. The mother had hidden her young in the bush and gone hunting. The cub looks to be about six months old. And there's another one. In fact, there are four in total. The mother guides her cubs back to where she left the prey. And there's no waiting around. The hungry young were waiting for their mother's return. They devour their meal in no time. The four cubs have huge appetites. So Mama Cheetah is almost always on the hunt. A herd of springboks. This is her chance. No luck this time. Perhaps it's time for a breather. But something has caught her attention. What? And where is it? Something's approaching. A common warthog. This species has distinctively large tusks. It notices the cheetah and runs for dear life. Mama instantly gives chase. No luck this time either. The teleporting technique does not work every time. Oh? What's wrong with her leg? She's obviously limping. A closer look at her paw shows two thorns. That must hurt. Many plants in the African bushland have sharp thorns. That's a painful price to pay for prey, or no prey. Poor thing. She'll just have to take the thorns out using her tongue and teeth. The truth is, successful hunts only happen about 20% of the time. Let's pause here for a moment. If Mama Cheetah keeps missing, how can she feed her cubs? Not to worry, Charlie. Despite the low success rate, everyone will be all right. How is that possible? The reason becomes clear if we compare hunting in the savanna and in the bush. The cheetah's speed can exceed 100 kilometers per hour on the open plains. Now that's fast. However, there's a drawback to all this. Huh? A drawback? Yes, a stamina problem. They can only go into full speed hunting mode a few times a day. In between, they must nap for a few hours at a time. Well, at least this one has found some shade. The cheetah may be fast, but it lacks endurance. Oh, I see. Hunting in the bush, on the other hand, is done at around 30 kilometers per hour. That's a third of their full speed. 
And before the chase, Mama Cheetah was able to advance right near the prey by hiding in the shrubs, remember? Yes, that's right. Although the maximum speed is lower than in the savanna, the running distance is also shorter. So no matter how many times they fail to catch prey, there's hardly a stamina problem. Ah, that makes sense. Also, the bush is home to many species cheetahs love to hunt. So even if things don't go as smoothly as anticipated, the next chance is always right around the corner. You mean by cutting corners, don't you? <laughs> so the fact that they do, and they seem to survive very well, means that their body shape is very useful and adaptable in these areas. And this is truly showing how they're adapted and extreme predators. What magical hunters! Make no mistake, these furry felines are cutting corners to make their job easier, but never let it be said that these cheetahs are cheaters! The Namibian Bushland. Let's check up on the mother and her four cubs. It's apparently rest time. For cheetahs, the rearing period lasts about a year and a half. As the young grow, so does their appetite. Constantly feeding hungry cubs is a full-time job. But there's nothing in sight. When the high vantage point doesn't work, it's time to start pounding the pavement, so to speak. Did she spot something? There, in the bush. A greater kudu. And it's a big one. However, there's nowhere to advance under cover. She's got to remain inconspicuous. She drops to the ground and examines the situation. The approaching herd is on its guard, taking away any advantage. Still, she's got to find a way to attack. Off she goes. She does her best, but the kudus escape into the deep bush. With no cover or ability to get closer, success remains elusive. A new opportunity? A herd of blue wildebeest has arrived. They keep approaching. Perhaps they haven't noticed her. Well, that has changed. And the tables have turned. There's nothing to do but walk away. In the end, the mother left without showing any intention of attacking. Not so fast. Teleporting, Charlie? That's what I do. But the mother has to feed her cubs. This is no time for running away. Yes, I know. But in this case, the cheetah really had no other choice. Huh? But the wildebeest is an herbivore. Maybe you'll better understand after seeing this. Here, the cheetah is chasing a warthog. Yes, it's closing in. You've got it. Okay, there. So? Now, watch what happens. Huh? Oh, 
another one arrives, and the cheetah's running away again. Right. That's a mother coming to its child's aid. An adult warthog is one and a half times heavier than an adult cheetah. The odds are definitely against the big cat. <sighs> that does give reason for pause. So imagine what would happen with a wildebeest that's four or five times heavier than a cheetah. Oh, saving those nine lives, huh? But cheetahs are carnivores. Why are they so weak? Their lithe build allows them to reach 100 kilometers per hour, right? That also means they are not as powerful as other carnivores. When eating their prey in an open area like the plains... Uh, are those lions approaching? Yes, and we all know what they want. In such a case, the cheetah will quickly leave the scene. Even if the hunt is successful, oftentimes bigger carnivores will come steal the meal. Is there no honor among beasts? But if a cheetah is hiding in the bush, it's harder to be spotted and therefore to have its prey stolen. That's why they feel safe living here. In fact, the cheetah population is higher in the bush than in the savanna. I see. That makes sense to me now. It's wonderful to know that the cheetahs were not just beating around the bush. The Darwin team was able to capture a rare scene that could only happen in the bush. Mama Cheetah hasn't had much luck with her hunts recently. She's even going out after dark. Ah, a herd of springboks. They're quite visible in the moonlight. Mama, on the other hand, is well hidden and keeping still. This is a perfect example of what hunting in the bush at night looks like. In the unobstructed view of the savanna, the cheetah would be exposed, taking away any advantage. In the bush, however, the cheetah's presence would go largely unnoticed. And there she goes. This time, success. We were quite fortunate to capture this nighttime scene. Mother and young must be quite hungry. Another incredible hunting technique has unfolded under the cover of night. One month has passed since we arrived in Namibia. The cubs have grown a lot and are all doing quite well. They still crave attention, but soon they'll have to start practicing their hunting skills. What's on this one's mind? What is play today will become tomorrow's survival skill. Tree climbing is the first thing cubs must learn to live independently in the bush. Under mother's watchful gaze, it heads upward. The view from above must feel very different from that on the ground. The cubs will now take on the challenge of hunting in the bush and honing their skills. Cheetahs are renowned for their world record speed, but a host of other techniques allow them to thrive in the bushland of Namibia. This magical hunter's true strength is perhaps its ability to adapt to a different environment. 